See, even if you do free marketing, which is word of mouth marketing, you got to decide that you are going to become a marketer. That means you need to get people's attention with getting the right message to the right market. Now that begins, that's a tough, that's a tough nut to crack, by the way, the right message to the right market. But where it begins is the decision. And then after that, you need to make a declaration. Now a declaration is you tell the world uh, about your book. It's that you open up and communicate. So I have a simpler form of a definition of marketing and it is the one word of communication. Welcome to the Magnificent Marketing Podcast, where we interview the top marketing experts in the world to keep you up to date on all the changes and best practices to help you grow your business and stay on the cutting edge. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. I'm here today again with Trevor Crane, and Trevor is best known for his two best-selling books, High Paying Clients and Big Money with Your Book, without selling a single copy. For over 15 years, Trevor has been brought in to help business small business owners improve their marketing, increase their revenue, and make more sales. Typically, he works with entrepreneurs, consultants, coaches, and speakers who have the challenge of generating consistent leads, elevating their brand, and scaling their business. If you want to become irresistible to your ideal target client and massively grow your lead sales and revenue, Trevor can help you craft a book that becomes your most powerful marketing tool in 90 days or less. And previously, we spoke about how to publish and make money on producing a book. And this is part two, which is going to be about marketing and monetizing your book. Trevor, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm really good. And I'm looking forward to giving the keys to the kingdom away. So if you're listening right now, uh, this isn't going to be hyperbole. What we're going to talk about are things that work for me, which is always like you listen to the guy talking. You're like, hey, this works for me. But more importantly, it worked for my clients. My 10-year-old daughter has uh, nine books. She's working on her 10th book, and we're planning on launching it. We have a bestseller campaign uh, that we're putting out for marketing that is coming out before her uh, 11th birthday so she can then claim she's a 10-time number one, a 10-year-old 10-time best-selling author. So this stuff works, but more importantly, it helps you meet your mission and make money. So don't treat this like a, just a free podcast, man. This is something where you want to pay attention and then just use this. this I'm going to give you the recipe to make this stuff happen. Awesome, awesome. And again, to reiterate, we did uh, go through the thought process before writing your book. So before, if you're just listening to this one first, highly suggest you go back and listen to the other one first so you can uh, have an idea there uh, about you know just writing your book and, and the ideation process and the mission and everything that we talked about then. So now, though, we're going to strictly, uh, for the sake of this podcast, be focusing on marketing and uh, monetizing. So, uh, Trevor, I believe you have a, a seven-step process, uh, you know, for – for marketing your book. So let's start at the start at the top and work our way down for us. Okay, cool. So um, let me give everybody just one more piece of context. What I'm about to share with you or the, to give you these seven steps and actually my secret weapon stuff that we've been – Dave, I forgot. Should I curb my tongue and make sure that – is this a PG show or can I be more crazy with my language? Yeah, yeah. within reason, sure. Within reason, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm, I, we're apparently not Marines here. I just want to – I can't remember. Um, so what – when I published my first book, I was able to use the strategies I'm about to share with you to 10x my income. So again, this isn't me talking about theory. Um, and I didn't do that alone. I did that with my wife, thank God, because I got an awesome uh, wife who's a rainmaker. But uh, le what I want to do is give you guys the seven stages or the seven stages of an epic book launch. Like once you have a book, you have a new problem, and you got to get people to read it and look at it and then do whatever the hell it is you wanted them to do in the first place. So I'll give you those seven steps today, and I'm going to give you my secret weapon stuff as well that will help you. Um, I call it the uh, epic ninja marketing secret. <laughs> mm -hmm. Epic ninja. Epic because my publishing company is called Epic Author Publishing. I love it. And also because I was uh, meeting a lot of book marketing experts and monetization experts when I was finally trying to figure out how to get my book done. And I was having lunch with this one guy, and he he basically shared with me his insider secrets of how he was launching books where he where his clients were becoming number one international bestsellers overnight and then having even a, a better strategy overall. So Dave, does that sound like something that your audience would want to know? Because I'm getting the insight right here of what I learned at lunch. Sure. Okay. 
And then I published a book about this, by the way. And and then I I, I thought that was pretty cool. So I, I coined this epic book launch because that's what he said during lunch. He goes, well, my clients have I we teach them to have an epic book launch. I was like, what the hell is that? So we discussed it. And what oftentimes happens, so the nice thing about today is if you, what I'm about to share with you is also a strategy you can use if you have a book or if you don't have a book. When, on our last podcast, we talked about some of the strategies you could use to uh, publish your book quickly, and I gave you a, a write your book fast strategy. But this is something that you can use if your book isn't even done. You go through these different phases of a launch. So... Dave, let me ask you a question. What do you think the definition of marketing is? I mean, marketing 101 is putting the right message in front of the right people. In my All right. Opinion. So putting the right message in front of the right people. So the, that's a freaking really good definition. Uh, so I think most people get really scared of marketing. They're like, I don't know what to say because we don't want to say the wrong thing. So then what do people typically say? Nothing. That's what they typically say. They don't do marketing is what happens. And most authors are creative types, and they created this amazing book, but they typically we, – we think it's yucky. Like the sales get a good or a bad connotation. Most of the time, people don't like to sell. They feel uncomfortable about the process and uncomfortable about self-promotion. And so this is why it's oftentimes skipped over. And so one of the first things you want to do – I'm going to give you my secret weapon stuff first. I'm jump into the seven uh, strategies. But these are all D words, and this is not part of the seven steps, but this is how I'd recommend that you look, whether you've got one book, ten books, not a book, whatever, and it is that you're going to decide that you're going to become a marketer of your book. Whether you've got one done or not, that's the first thing, is you have to make the decision that you are going to market. And Dave, I would like to go ahead and tell you that that is that's baloney. But why am I sharing that first? It seems pretty obvious. Brother, most people don't tell anybody about their book. I have a lot of clients that come to me who have found traditional publishers that will pay them to write their book, and they, you find out they made like fifteen hundred bucks. Hmm. Uh, you know, they, they didn't really get paid that much money for this amazing book, uh, and then but then they won't tell anybody about it. So the first part of this is you got to decide that you are going to become a marketer of your book. That it's your job and responsibility. If you have a book that people care about, then you owe it to yourself. Now, this seems like I should just skip it. Like, dude, we get it. Trevor, you're here to talk about book marketing and monetization. But honestly, if you don't decide that you're going to – that it's your job to market your book, if you don't look in the mirror and see that the responsibility of that is not your publisher and it's not your mom and it's not somebody that you hire, but you got to look in the mirror and say, you know what? i got to own this. I am a marketer of my book, my mission, whatever it is. The decision needs to come first or nothing's going to happen. And it's the decision to market and the decision to make some money and profit from it. Now, brother, I have some people jump on a call with me and they want some help marketing their book and they will tell me and argue with me that they don't want to make any money. And it's freaking insane. I don't even understand it. They're like, I want, I just want the message to get out and I want people to change and get better. And it's like, dude, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you willing to do some marketing? Yes. So they are. Okay, you're willing to market. Great. You know, are you going to spend any money on marketing? Well, I, well, what do you charge? And I'm like, I'm not, not talking about me, dude. Like, I'm not going to do your book marketing for you, but who are you going to pay? No, I just want word of mouth. I want it to be amazing. Awesome. See, even if you do free marketing, which is word of mouth marketing, you got to decide that you are going to become a marketer. That means you need to get people's attention with getting the right message to the right market. Now, that begins that's – tough, that's a tough nut to crack, by the way, the right message to the right market. But where it begins is the decision. And then after that, you need to make a declaration. Now, a declaration is you tell the world – um, about your book. It's that you open up and communicate. So I have a simpler form of a definition of marketing, and it is the one word of communication. <laughs> I know that that's very silly, and you're like, that's not rocket science here, but you need to decide that you're going to communicate to people, and I choose to work with my clients and tell them, declare. Declare that you're now publishing and promoting your book, whatever it is, whatever stage it's in. I don't care if you've got the hardcover, it's been out for 10 years, if it's, if it's just an idea, you start today with what you've got. And you can announce to the world with your marketing, you make a declaration on any social media challenge you, t channel you want, on any email channel you want. Like, think about the different ways to communicate. Text, audio, video, and live, right? I mean, you can be talking to a live human. You can do Facebook Live. You can do uh, uh, Periscope or whatever the technology is that you're using. That's live. You can use video. 
Okay, it's available on every phone today. <laughs> you know, on every computer. You can use video to communicate. You can communicate with an audio message like we're talking about right now, and you can go ahead and communicate via text. These are basically the ways we communicate. I mean, you might be able to feel and rub up against somebody, but I don't know that how that's going to market your book, depending on your book. But so you've got to decide, and then you got to declare. Now this means you need to choose what the right message is to send. Now my 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 one of my clients asked me this last week. Um, about her or she talked to me and acknowledged her fears about not saying the wrong thing and she's still writing her book but she's scared about the next steps and she's like i don't want to do it wrong so dave let me ask you do you think your audience that anybody that that might be a fear that you've had or any other any of the guests that you've ever had in your podcast or any business owners you've ever met that they might be scared or fearful about their message and about their marketing and about what they're going to sell I mean, of course, of course. But you know, and let me add to what you're saying is, you know, not only is it the fear, but it's almost the guilt of making money. And like you mentioned, I just want to spread the word. I want to get the word. You know, for anyone listening, just understand that making money is not a bad thing. Um, ma making money is, is part of the equation of abundance, and it's part of the equation of um, being able to allow you to do more. To, to to write your next book, to get to more people, to put more money into marketing, to to spread your word. So they really go hand in hand about you know really putting value out there into the world and then and then getting compensated for that. So then you can go do more and add more value to the world. So anybody who you know and and I and I hope that I assume that resonates with other people because um, I've just come across so many people that have that head trash, counting myself. And um, so I just wanted to kind of throw that out there to mm -hmm. anyone who just has any inkling of guilt of making money on something that is supposed to just be helping people uh, just stop right now and understand that that's how it works. That's how it's supposed to work. Well, anyway. if you don't, it's not a business if you don't have money. And, it, and if you don't make money, there is no business. You'll then go you out do more. business. A nonprofit company needs money. You have to have a money getting strategy. I mean, electricity costs money, and sandwiches cost money, and airplane tickets cost money, and electric. You know, these things cost money, and it's okay for you to exchange phenomenal value for mm -hmm. money. And, exactly. in, and and then to – and hopefully provide a massive amount more value than you get in exchange. But I do not mean exactly. that you are only allowed to make 100 bucks. And you're not only allowed to make 1000 bucks. You're not only allowed to make 100000 bucks. You're, you're allowed to make as much as you want to make. And the exchanges that you give similar value. Like when I go to Happy Smack to buy a sandwich – I actually don't know if there's a store called Happy Smack. But let's just say I went to Happy Smack <laughs> to buy a sandwich. And I'm happy giving them the money to get my snack. I don't know. I, that sounds like I'm buying something else other than a sandwich. <laughs> well, it, but you, it's it's a it's a it's a value exchange. So let's go ahead and skip past the yes, you should. But that decision is important because you glance in the mirror and you say, you know what? I'm going to own it. I'm going to. It's time for me to be a marketer. I need to be a marketer of X, Y, Z, and A, B, C. And this is your book now. Your message, your mission is going to make a difference in the world and help other people and make them laugh or whatever it is that is your thing or entertain them or whatever your deal is. So now the second thing is you've got to decide, you've got to declare that you're communi and, and that means you communicate to people. Now marketing is communication. I just said it's text, it's audio, it's this, it's that, it's the other. And you open up your mouth and now you say it and you say, I'm I'm here. You know that you say, Hey, can I uh Dave, can I get on that uh magnificent podcast? Would that would that be possible? I, I have this new book coming out. Or I have a book. Guess what guys? That's marketing. It's, and, and it's not terribly complicated. And you can go to your next networking event, and you, or you can post, and you can say, "I have a book." <laughs> you know? And if you get it today, um, I'm going to throw in all kinds of extra cool stuff to give you even more value, and I'll give it to you for free. Because if you're going to make money with your book, so you only make, uh, Dave, what's the most money you've ever spent on a book? I don't know, probably twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Cool. Guess how much the average, how many books the average person sells in their lifetime who, uh, when they when they publish a new book? Do you have any idea? I mean, that's hard for me. I'm sure there's so many people that don't sell a lot, and then you have the millions of copies. So yeah, I, let, let me just take a stab. The average book, counting all the ones that barely sell any copies, uh -huh. uh, I'd say on average uh, 200. So good. You're really close. 250 a year. Ooh, the what do I average uh, not number of sales. So let's say that you sold 
Uh, let's make 10 bucks being the average profit per book, which is completely baloney because you don't make that much because by the time you print it and yada, 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 whatever. But let's just say that it's 10 bucks. So do some math for me, Dave. Let's say you sell 250 books in a year. Let's say that you're just at, you put out a good average book like all the other authors and you sell 250 of them and you make 10 bucks a pop. Woohoo! Do the math. How much money did you just make? 2,500 bucks. 2,500 smackaroonies. <laughs> Take that to the bank. Buy a house. Hey, go, maybe you can go get a new Maserati. No, that, that, that's okay. That's not bad. But you know what? Most people will invest much more than that in getting their book done in time, money, energy, and resources. And if you're going to put, let's say, a couple of bucks towards marketing, how much money do you have for marketing? 2,500 bucks. How much money do you have for sandwiches? 2,500 bucks. <laughs> let's say you got your book, book done for free. You still, that's not much money. 2,500 bucks isn't much. In a lifetime, the average book sells less than uh, 3,000 copies in its lifetime. And so you're, you're, the money's not in the book. My wife had her brand new book that was at the publisher. It was at the printers, and it was about to come out, which is when we 10 x our income. And she went, and she spoke in an event, and there was an event that there's a networking group of 50 people. They all like Tony Robbins, this group, and they all went to go see to this power team in New York City. My wife went to speak on her little subject matter. And then my wife talked about her book, and she didn't even have her book printed because uh, – it hadn't come from the printer yet, but we did have the cover. So we went down to Office Depot, and we printed a fake cover for the book, and we wrapped a, another book. It was uh, like a Grant Cardone book or something. We wrapped another book in this fake – in this cover that we just printed at the, at the bookstore, and my wife held up Grant Cardone's book with – with her cover on it, and she said, this is her new book. She's really excited. By the way, it was already a best-selling book. I'm going to give you that strategy here in a second um, on how it already was a number one bestseller of this book, and she was holding it up, and it's really pretty because it's nice and glossy because we used a professional printer to wrap this sucker. But she was at the speaking event a week or two before she actually had a physical copy of her book. Fifty of the In that room, she closed $35,000 of new business. Because when she was there, she said, hey, guys, if you'd like to work with me, um, book a call with me or, or, or buy something from me. And then the follow-up, she followed up with a couple of those people that wanted to buy some stuff from her. She made 35 grand on her book. You tell me. Dave, what would, would you rather have, 35 grand or what was it, sell 250 books times $10? Yeah. Where's the money behind a book? So this is about marketing and monetizing. Guess what my wife did? She opened her mouth, and she's talked – to live people, and she gave them an offer. She made a decision to be a marketer, and before the book came out, she booked the speaking gig. And we were really pissed off that the book wasn't ready. We're like, ah, oh, damn, we feel stupid. But nobody looked inside her book. Actually, it's not true. One person did, and they didn't even notice it wasn't hers. They didn't care. They just didn't sell the book. The book helped sell her. And then from that same group, that $35,000, when they came, she, what she sold was uh, some of her coaching and training, and they went to one of her events. She made another $40,000 $40, on that same group. So it was over $75,000 from that one talk before her book came out. Now, I want to go ahead and make sure I give you a chance to comment and reiterate, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, recap my, my ninja secrets. Um, and there's one more little part I'm going to give here. And then I'm going to give you the seven steps so you can get those. And I don't just plant the seed and don't give them to you because I'll give you all seven phases of this epic marketing process. No, I mean, no, I mean, I hear you. You know, the, the money is, you know, for the masses here, you know, the non-Tom Clancy's or the non-million book sales, you know, uh, the money is going to be made and the authority that it that it brings you, which allows you to be an authoritative figure, you know, you get that that trust. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what you're serving and, you know, servicing on the back end of that is where, you know, you really can make your hay. And I've heard heard a story like what you just mentioned tons of times, you know. So, yeah, no, I'm on the same page. The, mo the money is in what that authority that it gives you that to everything else that you're selling rises up in the eyes of everybody else. So, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. Dave, let me, let me add something to what you just said. So authority, credibility, positioning, integrity, trust, like desire. That's what your book will help build. So I'll repeat that. Yes. Authority, credibility, uh, uh, trust, and desire. I think those four things a book will build. But that will, in and of itself will not make you money. I have doctors that come to me, lawyers that work with me. They have plenty of freaking credibility. They're freaking doctors, man. They're doctors. Like, you know, <laughs> and I have a lawyer who's working with a big primetime um, media. Uh, he's in, he's in, he was on, uh, 
he was on major media just recently. Good morning, America, Anderson Cooper, yada, yada, yada. And his authority doesn't do crap unless you have a profitable path to monetize your mission. You need to have something to sell. Something to sell that is scalable and sellable and that people want. If you don't have something to sell, you can't accept money. I can't tell you how many doctors and lawyers and one of my book mentors actually has had two clients that were on Oprah Winfrey show. Like you would think if you're on Oprah, like I used to be the thing. Right now you want like on Ellen. But you've got your 15 seconds of fame with, with Oprah. You're like, man, what would you do to get there? Oh, my gosh. Are you the next Dr. Phil? No, you're not. <laughs> But they got their 15 minutes of fame. They became. They took their book to number one New York Times bestseller, which is the best, uh, the, the biggest, most prestigious number one bestseller you can get. And they talked to my book mentor and said, help me out. I'm going broke. I'm going broke. I don't know how to do any marketing. I'm not making money with my book. See, the publisher owned their book. And then what else do they make? Like unless they're J.K. Rowling and they built a, a Disneyland ride with you uh, for every your Harry Potter series over at Disneyland, like she sells more, she makes more money on butter beer and uh, and 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 magic wands at the Magic Kingdom. I, I don't think the Disney owns the company, but you get it. On all that extra stuff, you need to have something to sell. Like my 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 niche, my where I help people. Is my whole thing is helping people build an ideal business to help them get that ideal life. That means you need to have something to sell. You need to have a core offer. And I'll give you the one question. You didn't ask for this, but I'm going to give it to you. There's one core question you need to ask and then answer in order to do that. So say you got authority. And as soon as you say you're an author or you're a forthcoming author or whatnot, you do have some authority immediately. Credibility, trust, desire, like whatever your subject matter is about money, marshmallows, Martians, whatever your thing is, you're like, wow, you must know, must know a lot about marshmallows, man. You wrote the book about it. You're like, yeah, I do. Great authority. And now you got nothing because what are you selling? A book. If you don't have something else to sell. So here's the one question. How can I best serve my client? If you were to sell them something else beyond your book, my daughter sells a course for kids teaching them how to write books. And her goal is to help 100 people uh, 100 kids become kids book authors. So you do the math on that. If she's to sell 100 kids or parents that are going to buy this thing to get their kids to write a book, and she sells sell it for $100, you need to do 100 times 100 is $10,000. Or she could sell 100 of her books and she make a couple bucks a piece. So it's not about your book. And if you ask and answer that question, it's a very service-oriented question. It's a very giving. Jesus will love you. <laughs> you know, you, when you go to the pearly gates, he's not going to, oh, you money-grubbing bastard. You asked a great question. What's the best way for me to help my reader and my client? What would that be? The, and if you want to go ahead and be really awesome about it, that would give me more freedom. What would be the best way to serve my client? Give them the most value possible and give me more freedom. Now, that's the core question I ask and answer when it comes to monetization. So I know this is a little bit out of sequence and what we're talking about here, but I think this is key because this is where you said, hey, a book will give you authority, positioning, credibility, and, 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 and that's where the money comes from. Nah, it sets it up, but it doesn't make shit. Nobody buys your, your authority. Now, they may buy because of your authority, but you got to have something to sell them. Apples, bananas, freaking something, a product or service, a course or consulting or training, coaching, something. And you can offer T-shirts, <laughs> you know, something, literally. I have a friend of mine that owns a T-shirt company, and he makes a quarter billion dollars a year selling T-shirts. So don't tell me T-shirts are a bad idea. You need to have something beyond the book. And decide what that is. And if you like that question, I'll repeat it one more time so you got it. What's the best way for me to serve my client and give me more freedom if you want to be badass? Because you don't want to just be somebody's mm, whipping boy. I was going to say a more harsh word, but whatever. You don't want to be somebody's female dog. <laughs> okay, so now let's get into the uh, ninja secret, the, uh, ninja, the last ninja secret I'm going to share with you, and then the book marketing stuff. So first one is you look in the mirror and you, you decide, then you declare, and you start talking about your book on every channel you possibly can, and you just say stuff. And then some stuff is going to work and some stuff is not. The only mistake you can make, like when I asked the question, Dave, about fear, and you said, absolutely, like I felt it, you felt it, we've all felt it, my client, everybody feels the fear. The one mistake you can make is not saying anything. Because I guarantee you're going to say the wrong thing. I made a Facebook Live this morning. I thought it was amazing. It was with me and my, my son, who's like two months old. He's a little baby. We're out by the jacuzzi and made this Facebook Live. And I was going to share this really cool concept I just came up with. I thought I was going to make somebody a million dollars. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I'm going to get a lot of love for it. Well, not one live viewer. Not one. Not one. 
apparently nobody wants whatever I wrote in the little thing and whatever time it was running and whatnot. I, mean, I don't know. May, I, maybe it sucked. Maybe my message was wrong. Maybe they didn't want to see my body or uh, my body. I wasn't naked. My baby. I don't know, but I do know that my message didn't. It, it didn't make it. That that one didn't work, and that's okay. There are other times I post things or I say things, and it does work. And I'm like, holy baloney! Look at that! Like I just said something, and it works. So the me the measure of your marketing is whether or not people respond. But you still have to choose that you're going to say something to somebody at some time about these things, and you got to give people a reason to do stuff now. By the way, your marketing. Should I, I like a direct response marketing and what that means. That can be confusing and overwhelming and like you might have heard that term in the past. But all that means is when you are – if market, if the definition of marketing is communication and I'm saying you should have direct response marketing, all you need to do is when you're communicating to somebody, when you're wrapping it all up, give people something to do. Tell them to do something. Tell them to make a direct response. Hey, thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, click here. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like that, come buy my book. Come join my community. Come do this. If you do that, I'm going to give you a reason to do it now. Let me give you a reason to do this now. And there's a little phrase you can use. Here's what I want you to do next. <laughs> it is really complicated marketing, but it's, it's direct response. Like, hey, Hopefully you're going to enjoy this. Here's what I want you to do next. If you like what I'm talking to you about, and I'm going to be very genuine with you guys. I'm going to give you my uh, my my book for free. You'll get one of my books. Go. Uh, here's what I want you to do next. Okay, I'm going to use the marketing. If you like some of this content and you want to get the free download that shares with you the Epic Ninja Marketing Secrets, I'll give you all that. And I will give you the seven phases of your epic book launch. Um, you'll get that. And you'll get my book, Big Money with Your Book Without Selling a Single Copy where I didn't brag about me, I talked about other real people you've never heard of that are killing it, making money with their books. Big money. You're going to love that book. I've gotten a lot of, I don't know, there's like 50 reviews of it on, on Amazon that are pretty dang positive. Everybody's loving it. So I'll give that to you for free. Here's what you need to do next. Go to trevorcrane.com forward slash big money book. trevorcrane.com forward slash big money book. And you can get my big money book for free. I'll send you a free copy. So notice what I just did. I gave you a response. Now, that is very direct, and I'm not going to make any money on that. It'll cost me money to send you that book, but I'm willing to spend money on marketing because some of you, maybe not all, but maybe just one or two, are going to want to work with me, and you'll book a call with me. And I'm doing something right now, Dave, that also people are – you probably are going to miss if I don't share – let you know. Like I teach a lot of uh, coaches, consultants, speakers, business owners, people that are willing to stand on stage and actually speak or be on podcasts and speak. And oftentimes – a lot of doctors, successful people, whatever – Oftentimes, they don't do this. They don't have a call to action, a direct response marketing. They don't say, hey, you know what? Write this down. Hey, what? I challenge you to go do this. They don't ask a question and demand a response. They don't finish up with that. So I challenge you to have a direct response and just say, do you want to do this? Now, sometimes you might be speaking someplace and you're like, well, I speak at a corporation and they're not going to let me do that. And I don't want to sell. What if I told them to buy my stuff that makes me feel yucky inside? I don't want to feel yucky or douchey or sleazy or salesy. Okay, I get it. Well, what you can do is you can tell people what to do. So you can be on stage. You can be on a podcast. You can be talking on – and you can say, you know what? And now you, you paint a scenario that you want some of your audience to do. So notice what I just did. I said, you know what? Some of you will get my book. You'll like what I have to say. And some of you will book an appointment to speak with me, and then you'll become clients. Guess what I just – I planted the seed. I didn't say all of you. Some of you are going to say, I don't want to work with this guy. But some of you are listening right now like, huh, maybe I will do that. And you're planting the seed. You're, you're future pacing them. You're telling them what you want them to do. Imagine if you're on your own podcast or you were speaking on somebody else's podcast or on your own stage, and you just said, you know what? Every time I do a Facebook Live like this, someone will reach out to me, and typically only like one or two people, and they'll private message me, and they'll say, hey, can I get some more? You know, Can I get your book for free? Hey, can I get some of this? Hey, can I check out your new webinar? And they'll just ask that, and I'll just give it to them because I'm really cool because I answered the question, um, what would help my client the most? And I came up with that, and I'm going to just give this to you if you like it. And then this is what I call goodwill marketing. And this is marketing. Now, I didn't give you any of my ninja or, uh, uh, seven steps yet, but this is some seriously good stuff, guys. This is seriously great marketing strategies that will help you when you market and communicate with somebody. You tell people what to do, and you either tell them, hey, go buy my stuff. Hey, go click the button. Hey, go um, 
answer this question in journal and then show up tomorrow. I have a podcast that I put out every day. It's called Greatness Quest. I put it out every day. And then at the end of that podcast, I say, I'll see you tomorrow. Join me tomorrow. Take the challenge. I gave you a challenge today. Ask the question and answer it. Please do that. And here's what I want you to do next. If you like this podcast, go with share it, like it, thank it, blah, 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 blah. A direct response. Each day I pick something a little bit different. That's a direct response marketing. <gasps> that's not a ninja secret, man, but that that is. I, it's just that's like that's bread and butter of what all of us should be doing on a regular basis in all of our communications. You're also training people to now take to, that you are the authority and you are you're training people to respond to you so it helps set up the sale it's also a um it's a uh, it's a subtle pre-sale what's it called can't remember the name of it uh it's a, it's a yeah it's a yes ladder you're, you're getting people to move along like a yes ladder um, i'm missing the exact language of what it is but let me um i said epic ninja marketing it was decide declare um let's go on to the other one document and demonstrate these are the ninja secrets. I said I was going to give you one of them, but like you can tell people about your book, whether it's already done or you have one that's coming out, and you can go uh, discover. You can go interview people about your book. Because by the way, if you have a paperback version of your book right now, you can create a hardback version. And that can be one of your uh, your new version of your book. You can have version of your book 2.0, and that's a whole marketing thing. And you can say, by the way, I'm interviewing people for my book. I'm going to come up with a new book real quick, and I'm interviewing. You can discover, and then that gives you something to talk about. You can declare that to the world. You can document that you're actually interviewing people. You can say, hey, who do you know I can interview for my next book? These are great little marketing strategies, guys. This is some of the ninja stuff because you're, it's ninja because people don't even know they're being marketed to. It's a phenomenal way to ask for a referral, by the way. Like, hey, could you refer me to somebody who wants to buy my stuff? Or could you refer me to somebody that I can interview for my new book? Ah, who are you looking for? Ah, uh, the coolest people that you know, the most successful people that you know. And if you're smart, you'll pick really the, your, your, your avatar for who your best reader is or your avatar for who your best client is. So all those are ninja strategies on the top. And I keep teasing that I'm going to share with you these seven things. And you think I need to shut up about these ninja things because they're so awesome. It's what I start with all the marketing with my clients. But I think I should jump into, Dave, unless you have any other questions, like what the what these actual seven steps are so people can get it. But you're going to no, use No, no, no. You, you set the stage so really well. But, yeah, let's dig in because we are kind of <laughs> getting short on time. So, yeah, let's dig in. Uh, but, I mean, every, I, I love how you primed it. But, yeah, let, let's let's give them some takeaways here. Okay. So so additional takeaways. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't want to diminish anything so you said because you said – I mean, I mean, you really drove on some very important points because I don't want people thinking that you know the 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 money's going to come from the book. It's all this other stuff, and you leverage the book for the other stuff. So no, I mean, it's very important that that you covered that. Well, and thank you. And it is um, if you don't have those things, all the stuff I just I'm about to tell you would would fall on its face. All this means nothing. Mm -hmm. What I'm about, to, if you are not willing to do some of that stuff that I just said, or all of that stuff I just said, if you're smart, you'll just follow the damn recipe. This is a recipe that delivers results, and if you don't follow it, you'll get something else. And if you go ahead and go, ah, well, you know, I don't want to say that. It's like following a chocolate cake, chocolate cake recipe and going, I don't think I'm going to put chocolate in it. You know, I, I just am feeling like tuna today, and you put tuna in it. I don't know what the frick you get when you put tuna in a chocolate cake recipe, but it, it ain't the world's greatest chocolate cake. I, I guarantee you that. It's going to get you some kind of mess. So if you want to now use what I'm about to tell you, use all the stuff I just told you with what I'm about to give you, you'll be golden. You'll have something to sell to someone, and you'll start talking to people about it. That's marketing. And if you're smart, you'll put money towards your marketing, and you'll get real freedom because when you figure the right message to market and you give people a message where they're like, oh, my God, that would be amazing. I would love to buy that. I would love to have that. I can't wait for it to come out. That's freaking effective marketing. Instead of the marketing I tested this morning where nobody showed up. See the difference? I'm not claiming, oh, look at me. Everything I ever said is, is working. No, that freaking baloney doesn't work that way. So here are the seven phases. Now, here's the cool thing. If you already have a book, you can deploy this. If you don't have a book yet, you can deploy this. If you have 10 books, you can deploy this. And here they are. Actually, I gave you the pre-game one, which was Declare. Because with all my clients, day one, conversation one, as soon as they're willing to take on the thing, they declare to the world, I'm publishing a book. You can do that today if you don't have a book yet. If you already have a book, you can declare your new promotion of your book with some new offer. 
whatever it is. Decide that you're going to get through it and put a t-shirt with your book. Decide that you're going to lower it to a dollar. Decide you should make a shift and a change, and you can declare today some new offer. Throw in a free training. Throw in a new selfie stick. Throw in a new this, a new that. Announce a t-shirt that's coming out that you haven't printed yet and even designed. You just like I have a new shirt coming out called Unstoppable. I haven't even made the thing yet. And I'm already telling people about it because I want them to want it. And I'm asking my little group of people, and I'll give you guys a, that extension as well. If you send me three referrals, I'll send you a free T-shirt called Unstoppable. I don't have it made yet, yet, guys, but I'm announcing. It's my declaration. That's step one. And that's step one of publishing and promotion. Elon Musk does this, did this when he said, hey, I'm going to have a new car come out. It's going to be awesome. You guys can buy it today if you want. That's a declaration. Steve Jobs did this. I got to have an iPhone. It's coming out soon. It's going to be awesome. Uh, um, uh, Star Wars does this. Hey, guys, we have a new movie coming out. It's going to be awesome. That's the declaration before it's done. That is also called a pre-launch. That's step phase one. So phase one of your book launch is, uh, if you once you get past the declaration phase, is a pre-launch. Now, if you guys don't know this yet, Amazon, a billion-dollar company. Oh, check that out, guys. If you don't know this, you're really going to want to pay attention here. Okay. You can partner with Amazon, a billion-dollar company, for free, and they will give you free marketing, and they will help you sell your book. And they'll help you sell your message, and they will do it for free, and they will gladly do it. And then if you have some kind of effectiveness with it, what I'm about to share with you right now, they will then promote you to more and more and more people because they want you to win. So what I oftentimes do within the first 90 days that I'm working with my client, I basically suggest that you deploy each of these strategies I'm giving you, each of these seven things plus the de declaration one, which is a bonus, that you use this in your marketing, separate your marketing one to three months apart from these different launches. There are all these epic phases of your, uh, or, uh, phases of your epic book launch. The, the pre-game one was declare. Then one to three months later, you schedule a pre-launch. This can be done with your book before it's written. All you need are the three Ds to partner with Amazon for free. Dave, how much did I say that cost? Free. Free. A billion-dollar company will help promote you and your message in your book. You don't need a website. You don't need a shopping cart button. You don't need anything. You can accept money. People can buy your book right now if you have these three Ds. So you need, a, you need to design your cover. You need to describe what your book is. And you need to pick a date that it's going to come out. Not that complicated. You upload that de those details to Amazon. Now, you can go to Fiverr.com right now and have a cover designed for five whopping bucks. Or you can take the cover you already have because maybe you already have a book. Or you can go to other cool places to design really cool covers. A friend of mine spends five grand on every cover he does because he wants them to be really awesome. But you don't need to do that. I typically spend between 300 bucks and 1000 bucks on designing a nice cover because I want them to be badass, but it's up to you. Like I said, I've gotten covers done on Fiverr for five bucks. I design my cover. Then I describe my book. What's my book about? And by the way, all the cool stuff you did during declaration and talking to people and interviewing people and discovering what, what's going on and maybe making some money because you have something to sell them, you probably found out some cool shit that your book should be about. And so then that's now what you describe your book as. Before you write it, la, 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 fa, la, 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 make money, okay? Before you write it. You don't need to write the book. I didn't say go write your table of contents. I didn't go say go write a summary. You can go on Amazon and upload your new cover with your description because on there you can say my book is about marshmallows and they're really amazing. They're delicious and you should get some and this, this book's going to be all about marshmallow recipes, okay? Because you decided that's what your audience wants. <laughs> and then and then you pick a date because Amazon gives you up to 90 days to pre-launch a book. They, you, you just can do it. They just let it up there. They will promote it. You now have a link, and you can tell the world. This is that decide, look in the mirror, make a declaration, and say shit to people. You can tell the world, guys, go buy my book. And I always told you how to get that to happen is you tell a lot of people to go buy your book on every and every, every channel you can. And you, you um, Dave, when I asked you what the definition of marketing was, you said it's the right message to market. You figure it out. You go ahead and say, hey, guys, please go do this. And you give them a reason to go do it today. So you price your book for 20 bucks, let's say, because Dave, you said the most money you ever spent on books is 20 bucks. Make your book 20 bucks. And then you leave it there. And then you decide oh, on May 1st. I'm going to make a deck on May 1st. I'm running a pre-launch campaign. You can buy my book on May 1st for $1. And you go into Amazon, and it's real simple, and you change the price to $1. And then you can say, and guys, if you go buy my book on uh, May 1st, I'm also going to give you what? 
a teleclass, a, a hat, a T-shirt, a bonus. I'm going to donate money to charity. It's my birthday, and I'm going to do this. That you pick a you pick something. You give them a reason to go by now. Thank you very much. I'd really appreciate your support. Another really cool strategy in marketing is to build a book launch team. And you can say, hey, guys, you can join my book launch team for free, and I'm going to be issuing free content, and I'll give you an audio book, whatever. You give them something. You answer the question, what would be the coolest thing I could do for my client? What would give them massive value and give me more freedom? Remember, I gave you a version of that question earlier before. You give them a reason to buy now. You give them a date on May 1st, and I have everybody go buy your book on that day, which is what I'm doing for my daughter's 10th book. And everybody's going to go buy this kid's book. Everybody, some people are going to go buy it. And we're going to sell enough books that day to become number one bestsellers with my daughter's new book. And that is a pre-launch of the book. Actually, that book is going to be done by then. So we're going to be releasing it. So let's jump on to the next one. So you would declare to the world that was your gimme. Your first one is a pre-launch. And you tell everybody to go do it on a particular day. And you can get promotional partners to help you do that too. You can talk to your mom. Go, hey, mom, could you uh, have some people go buy my book on Thursday? You can talk to Dave and you say, Dave, could you tell your people to go buy your book on Thursday? And he's probably going to go, well, why the hell should I do that? So now you got to talk to your promotional partners like Dave and Steve and you got to say, hey, what, what, how could I partner with Magnificent? What could I create for you guys that would be totally badass so that you would promote this book to your list? And maybe they will, maybe they won't. But you talk to them and you engage them and you find out. And that's phenomenal marketing, by the way of your book and it didn't cost you a penny. Now you just got to find someone like Dave who's totally badass and say, hey, man, how can I help you? What would be cool about this? You have, I've got a new course and program. What if I just gave it to you? You know, what, what, what I'll give you my what, I don't know what you can give them a massage. Dave, you like massages? Uh, yeah, who doesn't? Who doesn't, man? You got my a, a massage. Oh, that's what I want. So that's pre-launch. Now your ebook launch comes out next. Now you might be thinking, dude, why are you doing this? I thought you were talking about book marketing. I am. You're, but this is now, now your ebook comes out. They give you Amazon gives you 90 days to write your book before they deliver it. Like I said, you don't need a website, you don't need a shopping cart, you don't need any of that stuff. They just will accept money for your book and then they'll deliver it to your person and maybe wherever your buyers are. And maybe you were really smart and you grew your list and you said, here, get this bonus, get this cool stuff. Now you got maybe 10 or 100 or 1,000 people that are now on your list. And then the book all comes out to them. The ebook comes out to them within 90 days. That's the date that it's going to be delivered. And that book goes out to them. And guess what? You're a marketer now. You looked in the mirror and you declared, I'm a friggin' marketer. So are you going to sit at home and wait for the money to start rolling in? That's what you're going to do. You're going to sit down and you're going to watch the next episode of The Walking Dead, watch you another Netflix thing. No, you're a marketer. So you're going to tell people, hey, guys, my ebook is coming out on July 4th. It's Independence Day. And if you guys – and if you buy my book today, I've lowered the price to two bucks. And instead of getting whatever I gave you last time, I'm going to give you this other cool stuff. You give them a reason to go buy now. You, you, the first time, Dave's like, you know what? I'll take the massage, but I'm not going to promote you to my list. So then you go back to him and you're like, hey, I got a massage with a happy ending, Dave. What do you think? You make it better. You sweeten the deal. You find out what Dave's really into. Instead, maybe it's not a massage. Maybe it's something else. So you find new promotional partners and you promote your book. And maybe you tweak your cover because you made it a little better. And now you, your, your ebook comes out. And you're like, well, dude, if I had the ebook out, why wouldn't I just do the paperback? You could, which is a whole other launch. So now you have another three months. And by the way, do you think you can celebrate after the pre-launch? Yay, we just sold 100 books. Yay. Yes, that's good marketing and communication. Thank you so much. Thanking everybody to get your ebook. Yay, that's marketing. Thank you for doing that. Send them another email. Invite them to a webinar. Give them more value. Ask the question, how could I best serve my clients? It's probably beyond your book. I own Tony Robbins books. I own several of them. I have not read them. Now, I'm tired of saying that because it's, it's kind of a cool thing for me to say because then I can say I have spent a quarter million dollars on Tony Robbins events and programs and different things over the time. He did not make money on me because of the books. I bought his books. They sit on my shelf. They're a good banner. But he made money because he had something to sell. Something beyond it, something that gave me massive value, something that changed my life. I, t I tune, in, tune anybody into Tony Robbins events. If you haven't been to one, you should freaking go. Look, now I am marketing for Tony because he has something that changed my life. I didn't say go get his books because <laughs> I haven't read them. I'm going to shift that here because I'm like, shit, i got to actually read the damn things. I do read books, but I haven't read his. But most people won't read your book, so keep asking that question. How can I best serve my client? And then, yeah, hold back. I'm telling you. Don't give your paperback out until you finish your ebook launch. Now you might be like, well, dude, that's not really a real book. 
But aren't there people? I have people all the time that are running their lot. I'm running their marketing with them, and they'll say, um, "Trev, people don't want the ebook; they just want the paperback. Can't I just give them that?" I'm like, "Yes, but guess what? You just created desire. Have you ever wanted a, a, a dessert, Dave, or have you been to a restaurant, like say it's pizza or?" Indian food or whatever you're into, and one time it was delicious, and so now it's like been months later, and you're like, oh, I'm craving it. I just wish I could have tiramisu or chocolate milk or whatever the hell it is that you're into, and you crave it, and it, and you build this desire, and then when you finally get it, you're a little bit like, damn, I don't. It's kind of sucks. Pizza is like seems like plain ass pizza. Last time I had it was delicious. This time it's just not there. Am I am I talking? Has that ever happened to you, Dave? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so the build up was more valuable than what actually was delivered. So creating desire, having people say, uh, what I really want is your paperback, that's a good place. That's foreplay, baby. <laughs> and talk to your woman. <laughs> the foreplay is a good thing. You know, you don't want to just, I mean, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You got, you got to build the desire. And so if you have these pending book launches, it's the same content, it's the same pre-launch, the same ebook. You might tweak it mildly because you learned something, but now you launch your paperback, let's say three months later, and you go, hey, guys, I just want to thank everybody. Dave, can you still hear me okay? Yeah. Cool. I, my computer just it's screen changed. I want to make sure I wasn't talking to myself. You, uh, you, you tell everybody, thank you for uh, being on my book launch team. Thank you for buying my book. Um, we're just releasing the paperback. I'm so proud of it. You hold it up in the air, and now you're marketing it. And by the way, if you get it today, I've got even more coolness here. Come here, join my group. Come here, get my community. Come here, let me do a webinar. Come here to this event. I'm going to do a book signing in whatever Timbuktu town you're in. I'm going to do something. It's going to be cool. And you don't need many people. You just need some. And then you do the – so these are the seven phases of your epic book launch. It is pre-launch, ebook launch, paperback launch, hardcover launch. That Hey, we have a new version of our book coming out. It's the hardcover. And marketing is communication. So you tell people it's coming. It's like you tell them it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> and, then, and then you do more marketing. You you're never stop. That's why I started everybody today. If it's about marketing and monetization of your book, you've got to decide in the mirror who you are. And you are a marketer. If you wrote something that you care about or you want to write something that you care about, you want to take care of the people that you think are going to be benefit from your message, then figure out how to become a marketer in an effective, cool, goodwill marketing way. But you better make some money. You better have something to sell because it ain't your book is going to make you a million dollars. Now, somebody's on here, you're probably going to make a million dollars on your book. Congratulations. You're, you're the lottery winner. I, I, I don't know how to do that yet, and that would be awesome. But um, I, I'm, I'm a best-selling author. I'm not best-written author. I'm sure people read my stuff, and some are gonna, and somebody will. Someone's gonna tell you your stuff sucks. You got to become a better marketer, because you know what? You don't want to listen to your haters. You want to go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. So don't 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 listen to the freaking haters. I don't know why people take time to bitch and complain about stuff. It's like I could even freaking bother. I, I don't need to defend myself for any of my content, and nor do you on yours. Don't be scared. The only mistake you can make is not saying anything. Don't say – that's the mistake. Say something. Someone's going to like it. Someone's not going to like it. That's just the way that it is. Even Jesus tried real hard, and not everybody liked him. You know, He tried to be a real nice guy to a whole bunch of people. Not everybody liked him. It didn't work out. <laughs> so you're just not going to make everybody happy no matter what it is. So you just better just say something and then just be real and be raw, share results, and then you know share things that are relevant. Ooh, those are cool. R words, real, raw, relevant, results. Do that, and you're being authentic in your marketing, and you're sharing your, your authenticity and vulnerability. And then so the seven phases are, and I'll count them all out instead of being a douche. And just to, I'm not being a douche. I'm just, uh, just teasing, keeping these seven. Pre-launch, ebook launch, number two. Paperback, number three. Hardcover, number four. Audiobook launch, number five. Podcast launch, ladies and gentlemen. Podcast launch. And then one of my favorites free book launch. Amazon will also let you partner with them, and then you can partner with them and give your book away for free, and they'll promote it to all kinds of free lists, and you can go on different websites and go, hey, guys, go get my book for free. One of my friends and one of my co-authors of my, my one of my books gave away his book. Uh, what was his first book called? I can't remember. He gave it away for, for a year and a half for free. He gave away 50, He gave away 
hundreds of thousands of copies. He grew a list of 15,000 people by giving his um, book away for free, and then he asked, he offered a bonus, like, hey, guys, opt in, and you can get a bonus and join my community. He, he Of those 15,000 people that joined his list, 12 stayed on his list. That's 12,000 people, and then he started making an offer to them, and he built um, a five-figure-a-month business based on – it was like close to – anyway, he, he, sold, he made a lot of money on the back end, and he started with a free book launch free book launch, paperback launch, podcast launch, if you look at those, seven times three, if I'm doing my math right, is, is 21 months of marketing. And, and each of those is a celebration. It's a declaration that it's coming. It's a celebration once you've hit it. <laughs> it's, it's talking about your new excitement. And then we didn't even get into the relaunch and the release of your newer book and version of this, YouTube Secrets 2.0, YouTube Secrets 2019. So hopefully that gives you some strategies to market and monetize your book. Here's what I want you to do next. If you like any of this content, I'll give you my free book, How to Make Big Money with Your Book Without Selling a Single Copy. And all you have to do is go to trevorcrane.com. Click around. You'll probably find the link there. But if you want to go right to the free book link, go to trevorcrane.com forward slash big money book. Big money book. And you'll find it. And awesome. you always find uh, I'll teach everybody how to publish, market, all that stuff at epicauthor.com. And go get some. Go to, take, some, take some action. Dave, what do we got to do to wrap this sucker up? Let me, uh, let me just state uh, – we've talked about, about this, and you've driven home the fact that the, mo the money is going to come from – most likely, again, I mean, if you know, you're a huge book person. But for most of you, the money is going to come in other – uh, ways. So uh, let me just let me just read. We'll close by letting me read and uh, your twelve different ways that you put that I learned from you that you can monetize your book. And of course, these aren't the only twelve, but uh, these mm. can give you some other ideas as well. That's you can really audio, video idea. programs, books, coaching and consulting, partnerships and joint ventures, masterminds, membership programs, online courses and products, seminars or live events. Software, if you have a you know any sort of SaaS product, speeches and keynotes, teleseminars, webcasts and webinars, and and of course that's not everything, but those will hopefully get you some ideas like oh 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 yeah we could do this we could do that. So um, want want to make sure everyone understands again that you know give you some take home examples of ways to monetize because that's where the money is. And and in my experience, I mean I'm, I don't have near the experience as Trevor does in this. Pretty much every person I've ever known that wrote a book did not write the book to make money on the book it was built around to give you know give their current company which had stuff to sell authority uh, trust to wear it and then all of a sudden all of a sudden you just look at it as okay everything else you sell has just been viewed on the next level of a, uh, as far as you know what you're doing type of thing. So greatly, greatly appreciate your time today, Trevor. I think you gave everybody a, a you know a really nice outline and, and mindset uh, for everything, which is as if not more important for everything. So greatly, greatly appreciate it. I, uh, you know, everybody heard where they can go and get your free <laughs> book so they can continue to learn from you. Is there anywhere else that you would like to direct them to? You know what, brother? I've got. I, I was just thinking of that. Um, I I've got a really cool gift for everybody, um, and you can get my app. I've got a new app, and you can put it right on your phone. And I got all kinds of cool training and different things to give away. Uh, one, of, you can get the link to the book in there. Uh, if you text message Trevor to three six two six zero, so pull out your cell phone and text message the word Trevor T R E V O R to 36260. You have to click a couple buttons to like get the text message and then put the app on your phone. But my smiling face will be on your phone here with the little icon. And then inside that app, I've got so much coolness, a link to my podcast, a link to my book, free training. I think you guys will like it a lot. And uh, yeah, that's my final gift to everybody. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Trevor. Uh, until next time. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the latest podcast. Feel free to go to magnificent.com forward slash blog to see the show notes for this interview, as well as those from many other of the world's top marketing experts. Have a great day.